Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, come closer to the microphone. Yeah. It's taken me a lot of effort to come here. Yes. But there's a burning question which has been in me since months and months. Maybe it's just a chopping that I need. Um, you say that we are, isness is not born, it does not die. Mm. Then why the body? Where is the body die? Yeah, why the, why, why the body in between? Why the body what? Why does the body come in between? It doesn't come in between. There is no, hmm? there is no birth of the isness. There yes. is no death to the isness. Yes. Then why do we have the body? Why cannot? Maybe to experience this also, to experience the knowing of this. You see, to experience. You see. Some people ask this kind of question, you know, but what's it all about? Why do we have to? What's all of this anyway? And so, on. Um, it depends on where you are in your experiencing. At the right place, you will see the miracle of all of this, and that there can be no, um, there can be no experience without duality. All of this is about experiencing. Maybe it, you can say it is the self's desire to have the taste of knowing itself. Because if you have never, uh, the sense of even knowing implies to. I gave example before that, uh, you know, whilst growing up as as a boy in Jamaica in my town, that uh, once we were playing at the back of uh, Love Lane, you know, that's why we call this place Love Lane. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were playing, I think it was cricket or something like that, on the road, small, quiet road. And a group of people came by, and uh, they, they, I had the impression that the woman had said to me, you know, you will live in paradise. You will live in paradise. And uh, mm, thank you. We you know it was meant, it's, we knew it was meant as something nice, but the whole concept of paradise wasn't really. It didn't really drop in. Um, we just kept on playing. And uh, years later, when I travelled from Jamaica, went to England and spent some time there, after five years, uh, my first time back home, going back home, arriving in Kingston, taking the bus, going through the Blue Mountains, coming, just approaching my town, we turned one corner like this, and the whole bay. Um, of uh, my town, it's one of the the world one of the one of the world's uh, greatest natural harbors there, and the islands of it and so on. And so I turn around as I saw it, it came up inside. This is paradise. Before I have no I have no no concept about this. You know, you are just you are living here. You are just you are, you are here. The idea needs a contrast. In order to experience something, you need contrast, huh? and uh, in order to uh, maybe to have the sense of knowing, uh, something has to be has to be some play of dichotomy or some 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 duality, some change, in order to appreciate or to have the sense of knowing. I, I, it feels like this here, like somehow is the way that the self. Takes a form in order to have the taste of knowing itself, or something. You see, you say, but why, why, why the body? As you begin to recognize more deeply your true place, your true self, you'll find that this is a magnificent existence. It's so rich. It's so permeated. It's so imbued. It's so pervaded with the spirit of God. You see, but when you have the sense of the spirit of a person. We don't see it. We're largely blind to these things. Every atom is dancing with that. As you come into that deeper understanding, all the atoms they become like angels in your being. They are, they are supremely happy, like this. You see, it is not fantasy. I'm not the poet. I can only tell you from from what is here. You are totally just. The same world and earth that sometimes we curse and want to get out of, now you want to love with all your being. You love it. You don't love it like you're not obsessed with it, 
but you love it because love is you. And you see that love fashions all of this and takes care of it. You see? And yet there's this contrast, this is the paradox, that there's sometimes such ugliness against such beauty, such cruelty, and there's such kindness, there's such love, and there's such selfishness, there's such wisdom, such ignorance. On the one street, angels and demons are passing, and you may not even know. So all of this is so rich, especially in the human form of consciousness, has the capacity to to experience such subtle expressions of consciousness, and it's still only a speck in the infinite. I lost my uh, dear husband a few months ago. Yes. It was this. That gave me the strength to stay, to be. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Maybe this death of your husband, hmm, a door he went through, is your darshan he left with you to help you. Now you walk this place. You find out the thing that you are wearing this body to find. Yes. It seems so. Yeah. Yes, uh, use it to, to find uh, that while this body is still warm. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Can I come to? Mm. Yes. Every richness in life, all the greatest things in the world, in life that you can experience, comes out of you. We must experience grief, fully grieve, fully grieve, you see? Yes. And be purged of it. Fully grieve, but don't make anniversaries out of your grief and your pain. Use it, you know, and uh, in honour of the, the love you have for your husband, yeah, to find the love that is will never fail, never leave you. <laughs> Thank you for coming here. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And don't suppress your beauty. <laughs> I've been there to find my answers. It was written on the wall. Yes. You can't change the destiny. Yes. For months, I was just thinking, what went wrong? What wrong did I do? Did I make a mistake? Did we not do enough to help him, save him? Uh, it was written there. Nothing can change destiny. Yes. And yet destinies, seeming destinies, are changing all the time. And that's your destiny. Nothing that the sage says is to lock you down, but more to set you free. You see? The sage cannot tell you something that is going to lock you up. So everything is to set you free. You see? And sometimes even things like this, painful things, we feel, oh, we don't want to experience this, we don't want this, you know. But it's really highlighting an attachment that's gone too far also. The, the, we can love, but the love and the attachment 
that don't really mean the same thing. You see, the attachments are form. It's said that even a sage, you know, the son of a sage, uh, grew up with his father in the forest. But when it was time for him to, at a certain point, the father sent the son to another sage for him to wake up. Because he had become too attached to the role of father and son, he could not take the fullness of the father's guidance. He sent him to another sage. When he woke up, he came and put his head at his father's feet. Isn't it? Sometimes attachment can can really not be serving, you know. But it's not, it doesn't erase the love. Use the love. <laughs> What your husband truly is, is here. Thank you. Very great. Thank you. I remember uh, uh, one lady. She said like this, having gone through some inquiry some years ago with me, and she stood up in satsang, and she says, "You know, I can, I can see and I can accept. I can see that the, that I, as who I thought I was, I am not. I am not real. But it's very difficult for me to accept that my husband is not real." <laughs> <laughs> I can see I am not real, you know, eh? but it's very difficult for me to see and to accept my husband is not real. That was the time uh, her husband is my brother. Yes. And that was the time he was very sick. Ah. And I don't know what energy and what grace you had filled up when me and mom were carrying that grace to the hospital. Everybody, that whole energy was like very sad but very calm and very restful and very, very calm. And it was unbelievable how everybody used to just sing the bhajans around him, hold hands, do the thing. And like I felt, it was your grace that his send-off was so beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. As I have said, you only live once, but it's forever. <laughs> what is meant by this is that we will keep changing maybe garments until you have casted your shadows, have come to an end. For this reason, we are here. As you discover the inmost, the outer becomes less significant. In fact, it is, it is imbued with the inner. But as you discover this, it becomes your reality. And then the ephemeral you will not cling to. Find the essence and the transient 
will not disturb you. You will enjoy everything for its momentary here and goneness. Some things will be with you throughout all of your life, as you know it. They will take a more refined form, if they need to be, and if you take also a more refined form. But whether the forms are dense or subtle, the Self is subtler still. Even subtle is perhaps not appropriate enough. But all layers of consciousness are perceived in it. Nothing can exist independent or apart. Or there is no outside of it, in fact. And right now, just that natural intuition, the sense of being, is here, inside this body. Right now, if you don't let that connect, as it were, to any thought, any idea, any desire, any image, any form, Bring your attention to merge here. It's just here. Even subtler than attention, you are here. Do not cling to any hopes or desires or memories or any sense of attachments. They are just clouds passing. Unlike a cloud, you are not passing. Like the infinite sky, you are here. Is the sky waiting? Does it have any favourite clouds? In this inmost place, what time is it there? What season? Does it have a farm? Is it for or against anyone or anything? Can it be possessed? Is it personal? Does it depend upon your belief? Is it created? Can the function of mind affect it? Can there be an outside of it?
Is it contained? This which we refer to as isness or the pure awareness. Is there any boundaries for it beyond which it is not? That which is perceiving it, is it perceiving it from elsewhere? Is it outside of it? Is it sustained by memory? Can it become sick or depressed? Does it have a value? And if so, for whom? Does it punish? Can it be shared? And by whom? And to whom? Can it fade? Does it have a beginning? Was it born? Does it have parents? What is it that is perceiving it? What is it that is perceiving it? Can it sin? Was it born or created? Can it pass away? Can that which perceive it pass away? Both our living and our dying occurs in it. (coughs) 
Is it a place that we visit? And from where did we come to visit it? <coughs> Is there any such thing as a we who are dreaming it? Or are we ourselves dreamed in it? Who are we? Who am I? However diverse the appearances are, the DNA of all things, separate and collective, It. Yet it neither diminishes nor expands. Yet the sense of expansion is experienced in it. By whom? Then I ask you, how near are you to it? Walking distance, flying distance, imagine distance, no distance, and you say, no distance. If it is no distance, then it means we are standing in the same place, distanceless and oneness must be the same. Does the mind denying it, disbelieving it, makes any difference to it? Isn't your heart rejoicing in this discovery? How much more happy can you be? Knowing this, being a witness to these things, bring all your problems now and place them in front of you. Be intimidated by them. How we have made small things important. How could we how could we succeed at hiding the infinite?
yes, yes, laugh because we have been crying long enough, no? It's important, laugh now, enjoy. <laughs> Because how many buckets of tears we have shed for our delusions. This peace, this love, this joy, our perfume. But the flower nobody can touch. You can only be. be filled to overflowing with the, the joy and the bliss of the Holy Spirit of Truth. Thank you, my loves. <laughs> 